Hello everyone, welcome to workflow interview question and answer class two part one. Let's go and start. So very first question of the today class is what is container? How you can define the container? So you know that the container is nothing but it's a variable which holds the data. This variable can be of different type like a simple variable or work area or internal table or object reference, right? It can also be initialized with some initial value. You can mark as a property whether it can receive the value from outside or not. For that, you will have to make, you know, import enabled. And also like if you want to pass the value to outside, you have to make it as export enabled. Okay. So this is what the container. Let's go quickly to the system and I will show you. Say this is your workflow. One workflow is there. And if you want to see about the container, you will have to come here and select this workflow container. In this, you have the different predefined standard containers available over here, you can see. And one custom container I have created purchase order. If you double click over here, see the different options, you know. Container can be of defined with reference to class, with reference to some data dictionary, you know, structure and field, with reference to some data element. Right, so different way of defining the container you have. Under the properties, you can see that import, if you have marked as import, that means you can get the value of container from outside. Outside means when you are going to create some purchase order and when you want to trigger the workflow, then workflow is going to receive the value in this container if you have marked this as a import. Similarly, if you want to pass some value to outside, then the export will have to enable. If you want to mark that container value as mandatory, mandatory will have to mention. If you mark this multi-line checkbox, then your container will be of like, you know, internal table, okay? Initial value, you can also set it up over here. And here you will be having the attribute. So this is about the Container. container is very important part of any workflow. With the help of container value, we debug the workflow related issue, which is going to get executed in background, right? If the task is executing in background, we get the container value and then we go and check, right? By running the program or class methods in foreground by passing the value manually. So this is what you have the container. Now, another question, what are the different types of container? Container can be defined, a container can be divided into different types. The here you can see that the first one is the workflow container. Second is the task container. Third is the method container. Fourth is the rule container. And the fifth one is nothing but event container. Let's go and quickly see one by one. So here you can see that so container, this container, the one which you are able to see it over here is known as the workflow container, okay? The task container is here. If you have some task, right? And if you double click on this here, you can see the task container. Then rule, method, and event. Where you can see the rule container, rule container, you will be able to see when you have to define some rule, you know, that rule where you can go and check. PFSE transaction. So if you go to the PFSE transaction app and if you check out some rule, you will be able to see the container. So this is rule container. Event container where you can check it out. Event container, you can check it out here. Or you can go here and see under the start event. 
you know under the start event see under the binding if you want to bind something the container is nothing but like you know you are passing the data you are filling the data in some value and you are passing so when you define the event at that time what you do you define some parameter with the event right so that parameter is nothing but your event container similarly what is method container so method container means in method when you define any class method there you define the import parameter export parameter so those ex import export parameter is nothing but your method container okay so these are the different types of container now let's go to the next question what is binding so binding is again very very important concept in a workflow you know so binding Binding is required to exchange the data between two artifacts. So when I talk about the two artifacts, that means if you see here in the system, here purchase order, I want to uh, here purchase order thousand approval request. I want to send, right? Or maybe let's take some another example here. I want to save this purchase order. So because I want to save the purchase order, I have to pass this purchase order into this task. So in this task also, I have, have to create one variable which will get this purchase order task value inside this task. And again, from this task, I will have to pass the value to this class method so that I will be able to get that purchase order and I will be able to save the data into this uh over here you know miss by writing some logic and all okay so the v data can be transferred from one step to another step like from workflow to task we can do with the help of binding so in a binding you can see the purchase order is there and here also at the task level you will have to define one purchase order okay so at task level if you don't have any purchase order you can come here and you can you know see impo is there so we can use this impo this purchase order is of type po and we can use this impo for transferring the data so click on this binding and here you can drag and drop so from here the data will come here and just save this so this is known as actually binding so purchase order now you are getting into the task now from the task you have to pass to this method so for this you will have to define one parameter once you define the parameter i think parameter is not defined for this you can go here and check it out click on this and click on this parameter so you can see that there is no parameter once you define the parameter then what will happen that you will be able to see again over here one binding option you can click on this and you can pass this im underscore po value to that parameter which you are going to define okay and by that way that method will receive the purchase order and that purchase order if you want to save in some custom table and all you can save it so this workflow is not completed means this is not uh, developed 100 percent in a correct way just i have chosen this one randomly and you know that's why you are able to see some uh flaw in that but hope you were able to understand the concept fine now you understood the binding binding is nothing but a mechanism of exchanging the data between the and different containers of different steps right uh now one question you know we know that we have the different types of container workflow container task container event container rule container right and method container so which kind of container can exchange the data with what type of container so you can see that here if you go and check about this workflow container, this purchase order can exchange this purchase order information with what kind of container. So because this is a workflow container, main container, it has to exchange the data between all sort of container like, you know, it, it, it can transfer the data with a task container. It can transfer the data 
uh, with the you know uh, with the rule container right it can transfer the data just one second and double click on this yeah so you can see that it can transfer the data with the task container right it can transfer the data with the rule container if you have defined some rule you can be able to transfer the data with this rule container you'll have to choose some rule so rule container is also possible then you can transfer the data with the event container because here itself you have the event right so this this can interact with this event container right so these three container it can interact with you know so what are the different container through which workflow container can be bind so you can see the different options task container i show showed you event container i showed you and rule container i showed you so workflow container can exchange the data between this now let's go and see this is however not very important interview question but just a normal interview question for your understanding or normal question for your understanding fine another question what are the different container through which event container can be bind see the event container if you have so event container obviously can be bind with the workflow container right and event container can be bind with the task container so this both event container option will be there for the workflow as well as task so i will show you quickly see this event container is interacting with the workflow container and if you go at the task level you now let's suppose you have this task so if you go to this task level here you can also see event container you have triggering event right so this is how similarly you can see here the task container can exchange the data between another question what are the different container through which task container can be bind so task container over here this can be bind with method container obviously class method or business object method can be there inside the task right so it has to interact again inside the task you can define the rule okay again task has to interact with the workflow so task container is having these three different uh, you know artifacts with which it can bind now what are the different containers through which method container can be bind so see method container can be bind with the task container only nothing more than that rule container can be bind with the workflow container only so what are the different containers through which rule container can be bind answer this now another question what is the standard task number for user decision ts8267 this is what we generally use it's given by sap for your user decision making purpose ts8267 by default is your user decision task for approval or rejection so if you want to see here see let's go to the workflow and if you want to create one step over here create and user decision just see the user decision over here click on this okay and by default you know by default if you come here in control you can see that 8267 this is the task number which you have okay so this is what the task number you should know 8267 fine so the first part is completed now 